Hi, this is Jeff from the Ozark Mountains, that's in Missouri, in the USA. Well, our patient here is the RAM ROM board out of a Sharp PC-1251 pocket computer, which was also released as the Tandy PC-3. It lives in the back, right like this. You can see this one's working other than just the display. This particular board was sent to me by a fellow in the UK, and it had an interesting problem. It caused the busy LCD annunciator up here in this corner to come on and stay on, and the rest of the machine didn't work. Even when the switch was in the off position, busy was still illuminating. It was kind of an interesting problem. So he sent this board to me, and the first thing I did was reflow the solder points in all three chips. Um, you know, there's only three. It's something quick and easy to do, and maybe with flexing or the computer was dropped or something over the years. There was a faulty solder joint, but that didn't help out at all. Thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. They do circuit boards of all sizes, small circuit boards, medium circuit boards. They can even assemble them for you. Are you a maker who likes sharing your ideas with other makers? If so, you can submit your articles to the monthly submission for PCBWay and earn coupons and notary titles. Check out the link in the description below. So since the reflowing all the solder didn't do any good, the next thing I tried was a simple test with my ohm meter. I've got it set out here so we can kind of see everything in the frame. And I went along and I've got this one wire is I soldered to one of the supply rails, which is right here. This is the other supply rail. So if I touch here, you can see our meter reading goes to zero. So after I went along and probed each pin on all the parts, and since these are just some RAM chips and a ROM chip, uh, so they're all digital inputs. They should all be high impedance, you know, 10, 20, 30 meg ohms. And there are some here and there that are not connected. And where I wasn't sure when I got a funny reading, I went and looked at the schematic. That's this section of the schematic. And then I came up on the signal right here, which happens to go to this pad, which I'll use. And I've already desoldered this chip, so I've got it taped in place and I'll push down on it. So we can kind of recreate the situation here. Yeah, well, this one line was about 500 ohms. And everything else was, you know, 20 or 30 meg ohms. And that seemed kind of odd to me. So I went looking at what this was. And I found out it was address line 10, which, of course, goes to all three chips. So that means we had a bad chip. Probably, uh, if it was a short on the circuit board, um, probably wouldn't be that sort of ohmage. It might be less. And I figured that uh, the worst case scenario would be the ROM chip would be bad. If it was a RAM chip, we might be able to find a replacement. Is there a standard part? The ROM is a custom part. So I desoldered the ROM just by peeling off this blue tape. Well, no, I used the hot air gun, but get the point. Uh, A10 comes in right here on the ROM. I'll measure it at this convenient test pad right here. And without the ROM in there, we've got 21 meg ohms. So indeed, our ROM chip is bad. Well, unfortunately, these can't be replaced. Uh, this is a custom part made by Sharp. It's a 16 kilobyte ROM specifically for this uh, PC1250 or PC1251 pocket computer. Now, fortunately, uh, another fellow here in the States had a spare ROM RAM board out of a bad calculator. It had a bad display, and he sent that to me. I tested it out in my Tandy here. It worked fine. So that's on its way back to the UK now. Now, while this board is bad because we can't get this ROM chip, I have this silly idea. It might be fun to try to read the ROM off of my board and uh, 
wire in an EEPROM to this if we have enough test points here on the back just to see if we can get the computer to run with that kind of bodged in solution uh, and we can't do that permanently it won't fit in the, the computer but it might be kind of fun to let me know if you would like to see something like that someday so kind of after the fact here after I'd done all the investigative work I thought I would share this with you because it's a simple technique but I don't know if I specifically talked about it in any of my videos and it is quite handy and it'll go a long way sometimes to finding a problem well, on some boards you might have some address or data lines which are pulled up or down through a resistor or resistor array so you got to look out for that on the schematic um, but this is still a very useful technique it's very simple and you don't need any fancy tools and you can get some results in just a few minutes so hope you like that if you have any questions or comments just let me know in that comment section down there below and until next time bye